This video shows you two examples of solving quadratic equations with some real life application to them. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and read example 10. So this example gives you an equation that can be used to model the height of a basketball as it's being thrown to a basketball hoop. So someone's shooting a basketball. And it asks, when will the ball be 10 feet from the floor? So here's the floor. And it says the basketball hoop is 10 feet from the floor. So we want to know when that will happen. Well, H is the height and T is the time. So we're trying to find out when. When will the ball reach? So that means we're solving for T. So H is the height. We want to know when the height of the basketball hoop is 10 feet from the ground. So in other words, we need to solve this equation right here. So we've learned several methods for solving quadratic equations. We can use completing the square, we can use the quadratic formula, we can try to factor. So I would pause the video and go ahead and solve this equation. And then when you feel ready or if you need a hit, you can push play. So go ahead and pause the video and solve this equation using whichever method you would like. The method that I'm going to use to solve this equation is I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So to do that, it needs to equal, the equation needs to equal zero. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. Okay, so now I know that A is negative 16, B is 22 and C is negative 3. Now if I look at the directions it says if necessary round your answers to the nearest hundredths of a second. So that means if it doesn't come out to be 5 seconds or 6 seconds and it comes out to be something um, that is not a whole number answer then we're going to leave it as a decimal. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula and plug in these values. So the quadratic formula helps you find x. Well, in this case, it's not x. The equation, instead of x, it has t. So this is going to tell us how long it takes for the ball to reach 10 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and do, to find t, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4a C. And all of that's divided by 2a. So now I'll go ahead and simplify that. So once we've simplified that, we get 292 in the radical. Well, since the directions say that we can leave our that we need to leave our answer to so leave our answer rounded to the nearest hundredths place. That means I don't need to worry about simplifying this. All I have to do at this point is put this in my calculator. So go ahead and enter in your calculator, negative 22 plus, and then type in square root of 292, and then click equal, and then click divided by, and then negative 32. And when you do that, your calculator should say, round it to the hundredths, 0 0.15. Okay, now you're going to do that again, but this time you're going to put minus here. So type in your calculator, negative 22, and then do minus the square root of 292 equals, and then divide it by negative 32, and then round your answer to the hundredths, and you should get... 1.22. So we get two answers. Let's talk about why that is. 
So the reason why there's two answers, because imagine that you have this basketball player right here. And when he releases the ball, if this is 10 feet right here, it's going to be 10 feet here. So at 0.15 seconds. And then the ball's going to make a, a, a parabola right here. And then the ball's going to come down and be 10 feet again at 1.22 seconds. So there's going to be two points in time when the ball goes up and then when the ball comes down that it will have a height that is 10 feet. So that is why it makes perfect sense that we're going to have two answers of when the ball will be 10 feet from the ground. Okay, next example. Go ahead and pause the video, read the, the problem, and then try to solve it. And then push play if you want to see how I have solved the problem. So in this problem, we have a bungee jumper. And it says that he is 70 to, or 710 feet above the floor. So if this is the floor right here, the ground, he's above it, 710 feet. And then they give us this equation that models his height above the floor, above the ground, and t is the seconds. And it asks how many seconds? So since it's asking us that, that means we're going to have to solve and find t. So how many seconds will it take for the jumper to be 410 feet above the floor? So in other words, when will it be right here at 410 feet? So instead of H, the height, we want to know when the bungee jumper is 410. So in other words, we're going to solve this equation. So we've learned how to use the quadratic formula. We've learned how to complete the square. We've learned how to use the square root property. So you can use any of those methods. You could even see if it could be factor, try factoring. Now notice that the directions do say here, round the answer to two decimal places. So we might have an answer with decimals if it doesn't come out to be whole numbers. So when I look at this problem, I see that there's only one term, this one, with a variable. So when there's only one term with a variable, that means I can get the variable by itself and use the square root property. So I want this by itself, and I'm going to subtract 710. And then to get the variable by itself here, I'm going to divide by negative 16. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. 18.75. And the reason why I left that as a decimal is the direction say. Leave it as a decimal in the end, so I divided that out and got a decimal. And then to get rid of the 2 here, that's an exponent, we're going to square root both sides. And remember when we square root both sides, we need a plus or minus. So then I'm going to put that in my calculator. And we would get positive and negative 4.33 for t. But we're not going to have a negative 4.33 because t is the time, how many seconds. So t is the seconds. So I'm not going to have a negative. I'm just going to have positive 4.33. So that means if this guy is jumping off of here, he will be at this distance right here at 4.33 seconds. So the jumper will be 410 feet above the valley floor at 4.33 seconds. Now I'm going to do this problem a second time, just to model, I'm going to show you with the quadratic formula. Since this equation only has one variable term, the square root property was easier for me. 
But I can take this equation right here, and in order to use the quadratic formula, it has to equal 0. So if I use the quadratic formula, I'm going to have an a value of negative 16, a b value of 0, because there is no term with a t. So in other words, negative 16t squared plus there is no t. There's just a constant. And think of c for constant. That's the c value. So the c value is 300. Now I will tell you, if there's a problem like this on a test, this is a very popular error is that students will put 300 for b, but the b value is the number in front of t, and there is not one. Okay, so now we're ready to substitute our values. We'd have negative b, which is 0, plus or minus, b squared, minus 4ac, all over 2a. So we'd have negative 0, which that's like having nothing there, so I didn't put anything there. And then we'd have 0 squared, which is 0. And then we'd have negative times the negative is a positive. And then we'd have 4 times 16 times 300 is 19,200 divided by negative 32. So then you would go ahead and put that in your calculator. So the square root of 19,200. And then, so when you put the square root of 19,200 in your calculator, it's like 138.56, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you're going to do, after a square root of 19,200, now you're going to do divided by, so divided by negative 32. and you would get negative 4.33. Okay, now you're going to do it again, but this time you're going to do negative square root of 19,200, and you're going to get negative 138.56, and then divided by negative 32, you'd get the positive 4.33, which is exactly what we got here using a different method.